With two second generation Tundras that have racked up more than a million miles each, is a used Tundra a great truck buy? Watch and find out. Welcome to another useful video. Today we're covering the second gen Toyota Tundra and this is going to be your complete buyer's guide. In terms of the history of the second generation Tundra, it all starts with the first generation Tundra. It was the first full size pickup truck from a Japanese manufacturer with a V8 engine. And that gave Toyota a little bit of depth and knowledge into what full-size pickup truck buyers really want. And then in 2004, they came out with the FTX concept. This truck gave the viewing public a precursor or prelude to the future second-generation Tundra styling. This truck had a very revolutionary design, even by 2004 standards. In fact, the Flying T interior motif is still fresh and modern today with that central information screen and below the tailgate there was a ramp that would come out and would extend all the way up into the tailgate of the bed. Additionally the rear bumper also housed a generator and electrical outlets as well. So this truck had some really amazing features even in a concept vehicle. Debuting in 2007 the second generation Tundra borrowed heavily from the FTX concept truck for its exterior design. The design language transferred over nicely into production form, creating a uniform look that's big, bold, and brawny. The look was intentional with its wide front grille, pronounced fenders, bulldog stance, and barbell profile. It really wanted to make an impact in the full-size pickup truck market established and dominated by the big three domestic car makers. For the 2014 model year, Toyota revised the exterior design of the second generation Tundra. The only carryover sheet metal was the cab and the doors. The revised look consisted of a wider, even more pronounced grille, a higher, more dominant hood line, a revised tailgate design with integrated spoiler, and the Tundra nameplate stamped into the lower right hand side, and upgraded and updated taillights. Since a slight revision to the grille and taillights in 2010, the second gen Tundra went without any major redesign and the 2014 revisions helped keep the Tundra modern and relevant within the full size pickup truck competition. The original and revised design in my opinion looks really good and for a full size pickup truck the Tundra can definitely compete in terms of style with the other competition in its segment. Overall, I'm a big fan of the look of the Tundra and I do believe that it has aged very nicely indeed. In terms of specifications, the second generation Tundra was seriously a big pickup truck. In fact, if you got the double cab with the long bed, you're looking at over 246 inches long, which is over 20 feet. The 07 Tundra was available in 31 model configurations with a choice between a 4x2 and 4x4 drivetrain. It offered three cab styles, three wheelbases, three bed lengths, three engines, and three trim levels. All of these combined to make a pickup truck that you could configure to serve as a work truck, as a recreational truck, or even as a luxury family truck. The three cab configurations include the Crew Max, which has four full-size swing-out doors, followed by the Axis Cab, which also has four doors, but the rear doors are smaller, and finally, the Standard Cab. The Crew Max was only available with a short bed, while the Standard and Axis Cab were available with a long bed or standard bed. Based on year and cab configuration, there was a lot of different models offered that catered directly to the buyer's needs and wants. For example, some standout models include the TRD Sport Package, the TRD Rock Warrior Package, or premium trims like the Platinum and 1794 Edition that really took luxury to a high level for a full-size pickup truck. In terms of the chassis and frame, it was fully boxed up front with a reinforced C design that was underneath the cabin and an open C design that was beneath the bed. So the frame design, when combined with the coilover shocks, A-arm front suspension, live rear axle, and multi-leaf rear spring suspension, gave the truck a very car-like and smooth ride 
which was very much appreciated by a lot of full-size truck owners. In terms of the interior design and look, the second generation Tundra did improve on the first generation Tundra's interior. A lot of people however stated that the second generation interior looked a lot better in pictures than it felt when you actually went and sat inside of the truck. And for the most part, there's some truth to that. However, for a full-size pickup truck, the overall design of the dash and materials is to an acceptable standard. One thing to note though is that the redesign in 2014 really brought the truck up to a more modern level with a information stack in between the gauges as well as a more modern dashboard design. The interior is a good place to spend time overall. It does have big knobs and buttons that you can use even if you have gloves on. Big comfortable seats with a lot of adjustability and arrangement options within the rear seats if you have the Axis Cab or Crew Max and the availability of a lot of nice options. So overall the cabin is a good place to spend some time especially because it has good levels of noise, vibration and harshness. In terms of engine options available, there was generally a 6 cylinder and two 8 cylinder engines available. The 2007 to 2009 model had the carryover 6 cylinder and 2UZ 8 cylinder engine and introduced the 5.7 liter V8 engine. For the 2010 model year, the Tundra received a new mid range V8 engine, which was the 1UR FE. It made 310 horsepower and 327 pound feet of torque. The 2011 to 14 six cylinder engine got dual VVTi, giving it the VVTi system on the intake and exhaust cam versus just the intake cam for a nice increase in power and a little increase in torque. For the 2015 and newer model years, the six cylinder engine was dropped, leaving just the one UR and three UR engine to do duty in the Tundra. Sitting at the top of the range was the 5.7 liter iForce V8 that was available in essentially every model configuration. It was specifically designed for the full-size pickup truck application and it had a long stroke configuration. All of this resulted in an impressive 381 horsepower at 5600 rpm and 401 pound-feet of torque at 3600 rpm. With no manual transmission option available, the Tundra was available with a 5-speed or 6-speed automatic transmission based on engine, trim, and year. Depending on the engine, cab, and bed specification that your Tundra is equipped with, the maximum payload is around 2,040 pounds and the maximum towing is around 10,500 pounds. The 5.7 liter iForce V8 does come standard with a tow package and the tow package includes an integrated tow hitch trailer, trailer brake control pre-wiring, a 4.3 rear axle ratio, the tow haul mode switch, transmission fluid temperature gauge, supplemental engine oil cooler, supplemental transmission cooler, a heavy duty battery, a 170 amp alternator, and a 4 or 7 pin connector. In 2012, Toyota put all of this hardware to use by towing the Endeavor Space Shuttle. Like any used vehicle, the second generation Tundra does have some common issues, but please be advised that maintenance and owner history are very important as well, so it's important to make sure that the truck was well looked after. A common and expensive problem on the second generation Tundra is the secondary air injection system. If you have a check engine light with the codes P0418, P0419, and P244 followed by another number, it's generally this issue. What happens is that water gets into the air injection system, essentially causing one of the components or the whole thing to malfunction. The system contains two valves and two air injection pumps, and the dealer will usually recommend replacing the complete assemblies for all these components and the cost of this replacement is between three to four thousand dollars. For the 07 to 10 model years and subsequently the 2011 model year, Toyota has increased the warranty for these components to 10 years or 150,000 miles, but please note that failures do occur on models newer than 2011 as well. Another component that owners have noticed failing prematurely is the water pump with a lot of failures occurring between 50 to 65,000 miles. 
Usually you'll notice that the water pump is failing if there's a pink residue around the assembly or if actual coolant is leaking on the ground. It also makes sense to take a real hard look at the tailgate to make sure it doesn't have any structural damage from heavy loads being applied to it. It seems like the tailgates split at the seams where they're bonded together, so it's a great place to look for any cracks or bends. Depending on the type of interior trim, the cloth equipped tundras have a tendency to stain very easily. Even raindrops can discolor the seats. It's recommended to either power wash them or put some seat covers on them. A common occurrence on the Tundra with the 5.7 liter V8, the cam tower leak has been a notorious problem for this engine. Toyota used a gray RTV sealant and it didn't apply enough or let the sealant sit long enough to cure properly, causing an oil leak. When the dealer repairs this issue, they use a black RTV sealant, they use more of it and let it cure properly, so once repaired, the oil leak does not occur again. If you like modifying or adding parts to your vehicle to make it more capable or enjoyable to own, the Tundra is a great platform. Toyota offers its own selection of great high quality parts via its TRD line. They even had a supercharger available for a certain amount of time that is now available from the aftermarket as well. There are companies that make aftermarket exhausts, lights, wheels, brakes. And you can do a lot of aftermarket things in the interior as well, like add an upgraded stereo, custom navigation system. So there's definitely a lot of options. And Kevin Costner does have a very nice tricked out Tundra that he uses on his 165 acre Colorado ranch. After all the information that we've gathered, the Tundra receives a 9 out of 10 burnouts just because it's a very capable pickup truck with a lot of great options and it is very dependable. Overall, the Tundra has a very nice mix of cab configurations, engines, and reliability. While it's not a perfect truck by any means, overall for a full-size pickup truck, it does offer solid value, good resale value, and overall great reliability. Thanks so much for watching. Please have a wonderful day and hit that like and subscribe button.